As I've traveled and interacted with people who are uh, helping to bring churches together in unity, one of the struggles that I've heard again and again is that they feel like they've been, been pushed into uh, bringing churches together to pray. See, think about it. These are the, 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 the movers and the shakers. If they're going to initiate uh, bringing churches together, then they're not, uh, they're not the, the sit on the sidelines kind of people. These are the guys that wanna, wanna be involved, wanna see things happen. And yet, they often feel compelled that the primary issue is to pray. I, I was recently talking with, um, with my friend Kurt Wilson in St. Louis about this whole idea, and here's what he had to say. I have had weeks of prayer and months of prayer where the church comes together and multiple churches and multiple worship leaders and multiple prayer leaders from, from all different denominations. It really comes from my missionary background. I spent some time overseas in China and I saw different organizations doing their part as the body for the greater mission of reaching people, getting the gospel out. So here in St. Louis, I thought, well, that's what needs to happen. Different organizations need to work together to do their part for the harvest to go out. So I, I had a heart for unity and, and seeing the church come together, and, but I didn't know what that would look like. And over time, what it began to look like is, is prayer. And I began to realize that through prayer, there was some beginning foundation of unity, but it was really hard because I was the missions person. That's my background. That's really my passion is to like now we're going to get out and see the gospel go forth or things restored. But I was kind of pushed over into this um, area with prayer. And so it was a real struggle actually for me because I didn't want my identity to be the prayer guy for a while because it felt less than. It felt like, okay, well, that's great. You guys are praying, but what's really happening? Um, now we need to do something. Uh, are we really even unifying? Well, it's great. We have a few churches praying, but like, okay, do you see all the problems or is anything getting better? And so it was this real wrestle of like, I'm just the prayer guy. It didn't feel as important as an evangelistic meeting where, you know, hundreds are getting saved or hey, we're, we're serving in this neighborhood and we're redoing the park or we're blessing the school or all whatever the physical things you could see. Because honestly, there, you, you couldn't, it'd be hard for me to come to you and say, well, I'm the prayer guy and I've been in, you know, 10 prayer gatherings this month and this is the difference it's made. You know, it was really hard physically to see what was happening. As Kurt shared all of that, I could really relate. I can't tell you how many times I have talked with local pastors about getting together to pray and their all too frequent response is, well, yeah, but what do you, what do you ultimately wanna do? What, what, what's your end game? What's your, what's your ultimate goal in all of this? And you know, I, 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 I explain that what we're doing right now is that we're praying, um, but it keeps coming back to what, what, what do you wanna see accomplished? And you know, I've, I've never said it, I've always thought, uh, you know, you, you just told me right there uh, what you think the value of prayer is. I mean, think about it. What could happen if, if pastors from all over an area, Christian pastors, leaders of their congregations came together to pray? I've got to think that God would put his stamp of approval on that, would put his blessing on something like that simply because we are doing what Jesus modeled and what the New Testament writers over and over tell us that we need to be doing, and that's praying. I just think we underestimate prayer. We undervalue it. We, under, we, we just think of it as secondary instead of so foundational. You know, we, we have to start somewhere with unity, um, and I think everyone would agree in the church we need to pray. And so it's, for me, it's uh, been a first step. It's not the only step. It's not the last step, but it's very foundational and it always will be. You know, Jesus did not um, farm out his prayer. He, he didn't have an intercessory team. He said, hey, you guys pray. I'm going to go preach the gospel and heal the sick. And in fact, I've referenced it, but in the garden of all, like it's near the end of his life. And you would think, okay, I want to preach to five more thousand people. I want to do something. And he finally has an intercessory team and they fall asleep. You know, and he goes to him multiple times and they can't, can, can you pray with me for one hour? And, and, and they can't, but Jesus is in that place of prayer. When we think, at least I would think, Jesus, it's the end of your life, like go preach to thousands before it's over. And he's like, no, I'm with my father. 
they're falling asleep. I'm gonna be faithful. So here's the deal. I've got this crazy notion that when we pray, that God will actually do something beyond what we can do on our own. And as Kurt and I talked that day, he confirmed that crazy notion. There's a municipality in the St. Louis region that we've developed a heart for and felt like, hey, we need to go prayer walk in this location and just ask the Lord what would he want to do here. Uh, some of our friends got connected to the city hall and connected with the city clerk. And so one morning, actually our first morning that we went to prayer walk, we prayed with the city clerk uh, before she went in to, to work. And then we went out through the streets and began to prayer walk and just, you know, observe what God's heart is for this place. And we did that for about an hour and came back and had our closing prayers and went about our day, went on to whatever, you know, we, there was about eight of us and we went on to whatever was happening that day. And a few hours later, we got a message from that city clerk letting us know, hey, thank you for your prayers. We found out today uh, 1.4 million is being released. We got approved for this project of housing uh, that we desperately need. And we found out today uh, that it's gonna, we got approved and we'll receive those funds next summer. She didn't think she would know even to get an answer for another six months. She thought it'd be at least another six months before she heard a yes or no. But it was the morning that we were on the ground prayer walking, the first morning we'd ever actually walked and prayed. We weren't praying about that. We were just praying that God would move. Now, I think it could have been a really noble goal for churches all over that area, churches throughout that municipality, to get together to try to meet that need for housing, whether that's uh, you know just helping needy, helping the homeless, whatever it was, and, and to try to raise a whole bunch of money to do that. And maybe they could have done it, and it would have been a great win for the kingdom of God. But, but think about it. These guys didn't have any kind of agenda. They were simply praying and God's hand of blessing became evident in that situation. They weren't trying to accomplish something, and I'm not saying accomplishing something is bad. I'm saying that praying is the higher goal, and I think Kurt is right, that we undervalue prayer. What could happen if churches all over an area, Christian churches, came together to pray?